Kia ora and welcome to the New Zealand Agricultural Show 2022, brought to you from the beautiful Ōtautahi Christchurch. The cool thing about this year is these people here. It is so good to see. After two years of COVID restrictions, crowds are back here at the showgrounds and boy, are they pouring in already more than 120,000 people through the gates. And none of that would have been possible without our superhero 500 volunteers that have made this day an absolute spectacle. Yes, putting on an event of this scale is no mean feat, especially over the last two years, with sponsors, judges and exhibitors all coming to the party to keep this show alive. And in this TV special, me and my mate Ali over here, <laughs> we're looking forward to showing you guys around and introducing you to just some of those heroes. We'll be meeting an X-Men overcoming spinal surgery. 10-year-old Annie, who dreams of rearing a baby goat. A horse called Merv, with definite opinions on alpacas and winning. The General, can he hold on to his feathers until November for the judges? A dual NZ Trotting Cup winner, preparing for show week glory. And good old Kiwi ingenuity, bringing mechanical treasures back to life. A young dog with her sights set on the sheep herding trials. And former racehorses helping put lives back together. We'll be following their journeys to see whether they make it to the NZ Agricultural Show. And like many journeys, not all of them have had a flying start. This is Merv, his show name is Shoot the Breeze. Shoot the Breeze was bred to race, but he didn't exactly feel the need for speed. He had three trials, which is like practice races, and he was pretty appalling. <laughs> he didn't play at all, showed nothing, so hence how he was retired from racing and had about six months sitting in a paddock before he came to my house. Where he's known by his stable name, Merv, and for the past 12 years, Kirsty and Merv have become best buddies, who found each other and found a purpose. OK, next to go is back number 449, and that's Kirsty Sharapoff, and shoot the breeze. He's had a variety of career highlights. He's been showing, dressaging, eventing, so he's getting a little bit older, and we just had to listen to him now with what he wants to do. And it just goes to show how horses who are bred for a life on the racetrack can go on to live really meaningful and successful lives after their time on the track, like as show horses or indeed as valued members of the family. And like all family members go, it's important to obviously accept all their personality quirks, just like Kirsty does with Merv. Merv is seriously opinionated. He hates alpacas, like just hates them. Um, hates being second fiddle, like he's very jealous of any other horse that takes top spot. Is a bright little snot about standing still in prize givings. Uh, has massive tantrums. He knows if he's first though, he'll stand if he's first usually. He will follow you around the paddock nickering for a scratch. He's just cheeky and extroverted and yeah, a right little rat bag, but love him to death. So. Okay, the first competitor and the top cat, Ruth and Rick qualified hunter, is back number five, correct, Belinda McAnally, and airtime. You're not qualified hunter, are you? You wouldn't behave yourself for that. That was our first time doing round the ring, so at 16, it's his, it's his debut, really, for the weekend. Um, and it went better than expected. He was really, really good and went better than I actually thought. It's his first time jumping wire. Um, there's a big atmosphere out there, and, yeah, no, I was really pleased with him. He picked up fifth place in a really quality field, so really chuffed with him. So, with a clear preference to be first in the ribbons lineup and some show experience under his belt, let's hope Merv can impress the judges in November at the NZ Agricultural Show. We'll find out later in the programme. You can't overstate four, the strength, five, skill, and athleticism of our Kiwi woodchoppers. This show is always a crowd pleaser. It's full on when those axes get swinging. But when a spinal injury puts a young axeman flat on his back on the operating table, you might think that would be the end of a promising career. But you haven't reckoned with true Kiwi grit. Pete McEwen has overcome the sort of obstacle that could have seen him put away his axe for good. My back's been a bit of a contentious point since about 2019. I had my first couple of prolapses just then. So come January 2022, I ruptured the disc for about the sixth time and they basically said that I qualified for emergency back surgery and was wheeled under the knife um, shortly after that. Since then, it's been a lot of rehab to get to that level I was. 
Pete's road to recovery has been pretty tough, no doubt about that. But he's pretty determined with a punishing schedule of gym workouts, regularly running three to eight kilometres, and then honing his skills in the backyard. This is where we spend a lot of our time leading up to the New Zealand Agricultural Show. So this is simulating a tree standing. We mark the diameter. Safety has become such a big part of our sport now. The axes are razor sharp, we can shave with them. So we made it compulsory in New Zealand to, um, to wear chain mail. Now you're ready to compete at that. I'd love to one day represent New Zealand men's team. Whether or not that's achievable is an entirely different matter and time will tell, but only ever really aim for the top. You know, settling for anything less simply just wouldn't be good enough, I wouldn't have thought personally. Each one of these axes could be up to $900 worth. They're all different and unique in their own way and sort of built for different kinds of wood. We'll be keeping track of Pete's training progress as he prepares to compete not only against New Zealand and Australia's best, but also his dad, accomplished axman Dave McEwen. New Zealand president, Nelson Melbourne president, Nelson Club president, vice president for South Island, and various other things I do within the sport. So no pressure there, Pete, but still, it's the sort of competitiveness that both McEwen men thrive on. Really looking forward to the Crosshet show finally going ahead after such a leave of absence. It's New Zealand's biggest show from a wood chopping standpoint. So we've got guys coming from Australia and the North Island and Southland. It's quite exciting just to get everyone back together again and be able to compete, be able to compete against my father at that sort of higher level and hopefully win. So while Pete proves his worth as a chip of the old block, another show hero is hoping that her dream will come true. I've just finished my application for my baby goat. The Canterbury A&P Association gives youngsters the opportunity to raise an animal and take on all the responsibilities that entails. It's one of the many ways of encouraging our next generation of young farmers. Those selected to rear an animal will take part in a special Boys and Girls Agricultural Championship Day in November. It was an opportunity that seemed too good to be true for 10-year-old Annie Butler. I've never taken care of goats before. I've only taken care of lambs. It's August and she's discovering that to apply for raising a baby goat is a bit like applying for a job. I had to write an application how I would be suitable for it, how I would feed them and how would I take care of them and where would they sleep and where would they play. Applicants are expected to understand that looking after young animals is not all feeding and cuddles. So Annie, thank you for your application form. It was very thorough. We talked about the responsibilities of looking after a goat, but what we didn't really talk about was the costs of looking after a goat. And I wonder if you've given that any thought. I've done a little research and for the milk powder, for 10 kgs is $82.95. But for 20 kgs is $114.51. So 20 kgs is the better deal. Okay, that is a better deal. You have done your research, well done. I just want to commend you for taking this so responsibly. Thanks, Annie. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for your time. Annie's application was sufficiently impressive that her already busy school and home life is about to become even busier. With the ever-present Poppy the Labrador at her heels, she's about to meet her new charge, and she's in for a surprise. Oh my God, there's two! Come on. Come here, babies. Oh. Oh, he feels so soft and silky. All right, little lambies, you've got two new friends joining you. We've got a breath because you understand that goats can jump out. An important part of Annie's new responsibilities is to keep up a daily project book of goat sleeping, playing and, of course, feeding. Today I'm just going to do my title page and I'm going to do what they eat into little bags and I, so I can glue them in my book. For the milk powder to mix 
like good and then make it creamy, it has to be kind of warm, like bath water warm. Kind of like from a mother goat or a mother sheep. This one quite likes everything, likes to nibble on it. Hey, Mum, do you think nibbles would be a good name? Quite like chicken nibbles. I think I'm going to name you Elf because of your big, beautiful ears. You look like an elf. There's lots to learn about rearing young animals like Nibbles and Elf, and lots of fun to be had as well. <laughs> Life on the farm would be so much harder if we didn't have our four-legged friends to help us with all those tricky tasks, like moving sheep to where you want them. But for a young dog, there's lots to learn. Queenie, thank you. And we're catching up with Ian Queenie. Stevenson, one of the there South you. Island's most accomplished dog Queenie. trainers who has great hopes for his two-year-old queen come showtime in November. She's just turned two. She's not very old. Um, maturity means a lot in dog trials. She's got a great nature. She's very loyal, very focused on me. Stay there, Queen. Steady. Got to work in a team to take three sheep round the course. And if the dog oh. is fighting against you or doesn't want to believe Daddy, in you, it becomes a more difficult operation. Daddy Queen, that'll do. Come on, get in Queen. Here, so queen. here's hoping that queen. this young no. dog can no. master Sit old here. tricks and impress the judges in November. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Pam Jackson's place, it's feeding time for her prized collection of feathered friends. I just, I just like birds. I think I've always grown up on a farm and always had poultry around. And the people in the clubs and the South Island Association are just lovely people. <coughs> These little guys here have been bred for next year's national show. Oh, I tend to have a favourite, it's my frizzle rooster. He's had a bit of a hard life, but he's super cute. Uh, this is the general, or well, we call him the general. The more the sun shines, the more he curls up. His feathers are reverse from a regular chicken. Hey, his mama's boy. Pam's hoping she can bring home some ribbons with her prize poultry, but with the show still three months away, there could be a problem. Normally, we would show between April and July, but being in November, it's summertime, it's warmer, and the chooks um, can drop their feathers quite easily and go into molt. Whilst Pam's hoping that the general holds on to his feathers, school students across the South Island are training for an exciting new show attraction. This new event at the show is going to be action-packed. It's a hands-on racing-style event, including how to strop a trailer, how to change a chain on a chainsaw, and here, wall-classing just three of the 15 modules that these teams are trying to master. Fortunately, the students from Geraldine High aren't depending on Ellie's mechanical skills as they prepare for the egg show clash just months away. Is this similar to changing a car tire? Is it? But don't you have to, like... Oh, is that what that is? I literally haven't changed the light bulb. The light bulb? <laughs> Coming up, the dedication and occasional whack with something heavy to bring vintage agricultural machinery back to life. And the retired racehorses helping young people overcome life's hurdles. Just some of the stories as we celebrate the New Zealand Agricultural Show 2022. in Geraldine in South Canterbury this morning where these high school students are hard at work training for the inaugural Clash of the Colleges competition. They're doing all sorts of practical farming skills at the moment. We're working on fencing and these groups are hoping to take out the title in November's NZ Ag Show. The wire heats up as you're moving it, so the hotter it is, the easier it will be to snap. That's right. Keep going. Why have you entered to Clash of Colleges? Farming, it's a thing that I want to do when I'm older, so... Nice. 
basically entered to get more practice and boost my confidence. 112 students from 13 different schools will be battling it out to see who can strop a trailer, change a quad bike tyre or insulate a fence better and faster. But they're going to have to put in the hours to attach an insulator as professionally as Geraldine's Quinn Foley-Smith. So if you've got a massive farm with hundreds of fences, thousands of kilometres, you're going to want every bit of power you can get. Yeah. And so when you see these, like driving down the road, are yeah. they all done by hand, like you've just yeah. shown us? Yeah. There's no really? machines or anything to do them. Just fencing contractors. So it's proper yeah. labour-intensive work. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave the Geraldine High team's training in earnest as Tangaroa meets a dedicated group with a passion for breathing life back into some fantastic old machines. The men and women of the New Zealand Vintage Machinery Club meet in Christchurch every Thursday and you'd never find a busier or more determined group of people. We have in front of us here a 1915 Andrews and Bevan chaff cutter. It's currently gone under a two-year restoration by the guys out here at the New Zealand Vintage Machinery Club. When it came to us, it was in such poor condition, we felt that it had almost broken half on the trailer. But it was held together with strops and a wing and a prayer just to get it here. Um, we're so privileged to have talented guys like we have in the workshop. To hand build a machine like this is just phenomenal. You just wouldn't, anywhere else you'd, you'd, you'd throw it away. But we're lucky here, we've got guys that are passionate and enjoy what they do, and this is the end result. The guys put so much effort over the last two years to get it to this stage. It'll be lovely to see such an old machine working again. See, it's broken through both sides. The parts for these old machines went out of production decades ago. And so, not for the first time, the team has to improvise. We're setting up to make a new belt. So we've got all the tooling to cut the belt and the wee wire tie that holds the, the two belts together. So it becomes one big circle. A few wrinkles to iron out there, but hopefully they'll be submitting a fully working piece of history to impress the judges at the show. Their work's not yet done, and we'll catch up with their next project later. And show week racing events is a chance to celebrate all the good stuff that our mate... Oh, damn, that would have been good. <laughs> that would have been so good. And show week racing events are part of the excitement to celebrate these beautiful hoi hoi behind me here. Aotearoa breeds some of the world's finest racehorses, but not every foal can become a winner, and age and injury catches up with others. Aotearoa's harness and thoroughbred racing bodies help fund a fleet of horse ambulances that attend all race meetings and are available for equine events. They also rely on fundraising and corporate partnerships. With at least one course bed available on every race day, the horse ambulance is ever present to transport patients to the nearest vet clinic. These horses can still be heroes, and we're about to meet rehabilitated thoroughbreds helping young tamariki cope with life's hurdles. In Miranda, south of Auckland, Anna Rehab is delivering an internationally recognised equine assisted learning program. That's a girl, in you go. There we go. Good girl, dive in. Anna Bajan trained as a large animal veterinary technician with a passion for rehabilitating racehorses, hence Anna Rehab. Her mother Maria is a former school teacher committed to helping young people who are struggling emotionally, socially or mentally. But we don't want to give him any added stress, do we? I wanted something where I could say to parents, there is scientific backing for this kind of work with horses that will have really specific measurable outcomes. And that's my teaching background. The youngsters and thoroughbreds work together to achieve goals based on communication, teamwork, respect and understanding. Oh, nice! Good job. Look at this. Look, oh, Luke will go anywhere for a carrot. It's like an obstacle course. Yay! Sarah, what's your one? I'm going to show teamwork. Teamwork. So what will that look like in the arena? Paige? Helping people if they need help. Yep, helping if they need help. What else? Listening and communicating. Yes, definitely. Make sure that the horses are feeling safe in the arena. 
Anna Rehab is a result of a dramatic journey experienced by Anna and a horse who inspired the learning and teaching that happens here. I think I was about six months out from a, a traumatic brain injury. As quite a lot of stable staff do, I latched onto one horse. You often, it's not uncommon in racing stables, which I think is really beautiful. You have, you know, like your special horse. And um, he became it for me. And he became the reason I got out of bed in the morning. And um, he was a pretty rubbish race horse, but he was a really cool dude. So, sorry, I'm sorry. You're fantastic. I was very angry after my head injury. It does change your personality a little bit. Um, you become really, really frustrated. And I just sort of think we got each other. And I got to watch him grow. Just a really nice story of, of coming back from somewhere you didn't think you'd come back from. And we've been able to teach through his story, we've been able to teach things like uh, don't pigeonhole yourself or people or, you know, it is possible to grow. I'm oh, so <laughs> Oh, I do this every time. I do this every time. <laughs> These particular horses, a lot of them couldn't go on to a high sport level career. They couldn't go on to eventing or polo or anything. And because they are a work breed, they do sort of require the work for, the, for their mental and emotional health. And if they can't get that stimulation physically, because they physically can't do it, um, this is their mental and emotional stimulation. This is what keeps them sane. Are you an old pro, buddy? You've done this before, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, yes. If I had $5 for every person who said to me, oh, you can't do that with racehorses, they make excellent therapy horses because they have the strong work ethic. They want to please, they want to do well, they want to be busy. These X racehorses and probably all X racehorses are the most empathetic animals I've ever met. Here at Dancing on Moonlight in Swananoa, where dual New Zealand Trotting Cup winner Monkey King, known here on the farm by his friends as Sam, has retired after an extraordinary harness racing career. But he hasn't put all his feet up quite yet. Here he has a new life with new responsibilities and he's enjoying a late career shift too. One of those responsibilities is babysitting the weanlings in the paddock the calming influence of a senior male who has seen and just about done it all, including winning the Miracle Mile, Auckland Cup, and Monkey King was the only horse to win both the NZ Trotting Cup and the free-for-all event, the Double Double, over two consecutive years. Why did you retire him? He was just getting old and yeah. he was feeling things, so feeling tired. He'd, done, he'd done a job <laughs> yeah. for us and we wanted to do the right thing by him yeah. and not race him till he was no good. Yeah. You know, we wanted him to end on a high. And Sam's amazing journey continues with a beautiful partnership. You could say a case of love at first sight. At first it was a real love-love relationship. Now I'm sure it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. One thing about Sam is he has to have a job. He loves doing something. He'd never be satisfied sitting in the paddock. So it's nice to give him that opportunity, even at 19 years old. It's just incredible, and I think it's really cool for the breed, for everyone else to see that they can still do amazing things, even at this age and even after such an incredible racing career. But honestly, if he's happy, I'm happy. He's just such a cool horse. After just four months, Sam has quickly learned what horse and rider can achieve together in the show ring and what a little makeover can do to impress the judges. <laughs> All right, Sam. Just like people, we like to enhance their eyes yeah. and their nose and his ears get trimmed on the outside so he's not looking fluffy. Yeah. Um, so and what, are we talking mascara or what do you do here? Uh, <laughs> well, I can show you, but we have like a, a matte black makeup yeah, and cool. we just put it over his eyes and it's like a, a gloss on top and it just like makes the eyes pop. And then as well as that, we like things to be incredibly white when they are white. So he yeah. gets a uh, white powder that gets made into a paste mm. and we paint that on his wee star to make that nice and white mm. and he gets it over all of his socks. 
All for a $2 ribbon. <laughs> Meanwhile, father and son have teamed up to compete at the Rangiura show. 37, 38. The camaraderie between father and son is, is quite unique within our sport and to be part of it is, yeah, it's pretty special really in a lot of respects. There's not many sports you can go in and still be competitive against your folks. The training's going pretty well. I had a bit of a setback with a flu a few weeks ago so it slowed down a lot of things. Uh, we had our first show of the, um, the season last weekend and it went pretty well, you know, made every final and placed in uh, all bar one so it was a good start. But it's when father meets son, head to head, that things get even more interesting. Now we're in the same event, right alongside each other. He's 30 years younger, and your bigger, handicap's 30 seconds stronger. Slower. So really, you know, it's against me right from the word go to be fair, but we'll give it a nudge because I hate losing to him. Well done, Bob Peterson there, looked like he took it out. Very tidy block and very well done. Deb was pretty unlucky on that one. Unfortunately, Dad got a naughty bit of wood. You couldn't see from the outside once he got onto the knots. Knots hold chips to make it harder, so by no fault of his own, he was already starting on the back foot. So, missed the final on this one, but, you know, better luck in the next shot. It's all down to the luck of the draw of the wood. A gracious response there, Pete. But for an ex-man or woman, there's always another show day event just minutes away. And his goats are 10 months old and full of mischief. Annie is teaching them how to be led around the show ring, but she's also making time for plenty of play and tricks. One, two, three, go. Go. Good job. Good boy. I have done some more in my project book about their feeding and their resting and playtime cycles. And I think the next step to do in my project book would be where they come from and what were they originally used for. Like most young goats, Nibbles and Alf have become right little escape artists. Come on. Nibbles, come on. Drop it, drop it. Oh, don't eat the bird poo. He's going in the naughty corner. <laughs> so while Nibbles calls his heels in the naughty corner, the vintage machinery team have hit a snag or two. Can you get it back into neutral for us? Yep, I'm going to go and grab a hammer. Yes, yeah, you should be at a gear now. The team is preparing this grand old Clayton header to display at the show. That's if they can get it back into gear. With a bit of Kiwi ingenuity and something to hit it with, you can achieve anything you like. Now we just have to fix it properly. This header would have been at home on many Kiwi farms back in the day when the Beatles were touring Aotearoa. Since then, our local wildlife has taken an interest. Great. There's a bird's nest in the base of where the gear lever is. That might have been why, what was making it stiff. I think the bird's nest might have been part of the problem. It's so important for us to preserve what we can for the future. A lot of people aren't going to realise just how your food is produced from farming industry. And by keeping a lot of these things going, it's good history to fall back on. When we return, it's showtime. Day one of the NZ Agricultural Show 2022. And is Merv going to behave? He was appallingly behaved at Amberley AMP last weekend. And his first outing as an exhibitor at Sefton School Pet Day. I'm feeling pretty nervous. And the general, all present and correct as the poultry judging gets underway. It's been a busy time for young Annie and today is her first big test to gain experience for what's ahead. It's Sefton School Pet Day judging, and she's up against some tough and pretty adorable competition. <laughs> Pet Day is really important for our children because it reflects our school and community values. It teaches our children to respect animals and um, building relationships. Those are really important that kids bond with their animals. <laughs> Thank you. 
And what is this special chicken's name? Um, Pajungus. Pajungus? Yes. Gosh, how do I spell that? Three and a half weeks old. And did you use mother's milk or did you use milk we powder? Milk powder. Okay. Sell You'll sell them. You'll sell them. Okay. Hi, Annie. Hi. I'm I'm Des, and I'm going to ask you a few questions about your goat. Has it got a name for a start off? Uh, yes, this is Nibbles. Nibbles. Now, can you tell me what what breed of goat have we got? It's Boar and Sani. And now, can you take her a wee walk down through here? Okay, that's pretty good. Come on back. Right. Oh, well, thank you. I'll, I'm going to do some point scoring now. It's not the first time that Annie will have to wait for the judges' deliberations. And the ever-faithful Poppy is a welcome distraction. Okay, attention, everyone. Come and sit down. Good job. Now, now we're doing the, the goats. Third prize goes to Imani. Congratulations. Second goes to Monica. Congratulations. And first prize in the goats goes to Annie. An amazing project, and I'd like Des to present the cup. Congratulations. So the hard work has paid off, but there's a long way to go, with the Canterbury A&P Boys and Girls Agricultural Championship ahead of her. Welcome to the land of Tuahuriri. We extend the warmest of greetings to you all. Nō reira, he te mihi atu ki Welcome, twice welcome, thrice welcome. Tihei Mauri Ora. Tororia, Haleluia, Kia iho o ngā mano. Day one of the 2022 New Zealand Agricultural Show after a closure that no one expected. We never imagined that we were going to be cancelling it for two years, but the governance of the association came up with the idea that we needed to formulate a show saviour campaign. What we never imagined when we formulated that campaign and put it together was the level of support that it was going to gain. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And it's with thanks to those show saviours that we're still all standing here today because they did truly save us. And as the show was formally opened, 112 students have arrived on site to compete in the show's first ever Clash of the Colleges. Ellie has been following the team from Geraldine. And these are my boys from Christchurch Boys High. All good? Anything for me? You're allowed to swear? Oh, you, can. Question, you can swear if you want, but you've got to do five burpees. Oh, no. Everyone. Everyone has to do five oh, burpees. Everyone. Geraldine, how are we feeling? Good. Good, yeah. Good. OK. We've yeah. done the mahi. Yeah. We need to represent the regions, OK? Time to make history. Yeah. All in. One, two, three, Geraldine. One, two, three, Geraldine! <laughs> All righty, team. We're about to crack into it. We've got a five-second starter for the 2022 Clash of the Colleges. Three, two, three. One, go! So it's on with the safety gear and a gruelling first challenge for the teams. Over the rope, one end of the rope. Over the boom. Both ends touch the ground. Yep, you guys. Grab that end. Yeah, down, 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 down. That's it, break the brushwood. So everyone should have started, guys, as soon as the hooter goes. That's it, break the brushwood. Teams compete simultaneously with five minutes for each of the class modules before moving to the next one. Hey. Got a whole heap of kids coming from all over Canterbury, um, from Geraldine up to Cheviot. 
a few city schools as well, from the private schools to the area schools. This is about camaraderie, um, getting them together, kids that don't normally see each other, um, and getting them involved in something. So you've got the egg throw and catch, it's going to get a little bit messy. Gum boot throw, which you're a pro at. <laughs> Gosh. Then some real serious stuff like fencing through to wall classing, body conditioning. Well, we'll Two point five and three. About the same. Three. Two and a half. Three. Got any favourites? Probably Geraldine. Um, they've got some very good fencing talent down there, yeah. and um, I think they're going to knock that one out of the park. The boys' high lads might be tough competition, but they may not have reckoned with Quinn, the super fencer. But it wasn't all serious stuff. There were plenty of rural games thrown in. Righto, so you guys have got to get from uh, here up to those bundles of wool packs and back with all four years on the wool fair drop. Yep. And I'm going to time you. Sweet. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Wait, we're not on the count. Then say stop. Three, two, one, jump. Jim! Jump! Far out! <laughs> <laughs> Jim! The top three team scores were very close, but my mate Ali won't be happy. Christchurch boys team two came first. Second, Rangirudu's team 23. Third place went to Geraldine's team 16. Spot prizes were awarded to Quinn's Geraldine team and Oxford for positive attitudes, teamwork and manners. At the other end of the showgrounds, there's tension in the air. Just the day before at Addington Raceway, Sam, aka Monkey King, proudly helped deliver the trophy in the Parade of Champions with fellow dual New Zealand Cup winners Terita Love and Lazarus. Would all that excitement unsettle the former champion? So it's competition day. How the nerves? How are you feeling? It's a little bit stressed, a little bit nervous. Yeah. It's a really big competition today, yes. and um, yeah, Sam's definitely feeling it after yesterday. Yeah, how's his mindset? <laughs> he's good. I think he's still a little bit worked up after all the horses at Cup Day yesterday. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? We couldn't expect anything more from him. He seems quite happy now, just looking around and being Sam. <laughs> Yeah, you guys don't forget anything. Stop. stop it. I just had to take the wheelbarrow. So we've got everything. So you're all good. Is <laughs> that my alarm or your alarm? He's moving amazingly. He looks stunning. And it's been learning for him, you know, and we're just excited to see him doing it. And yesterday he was at the races, and today he's been a riding horse. That's just so exciting. And he's taking it all in his stride and um, we'll just be along for the ride for as long as he wants to do it. Max Walton, Wednesday at 1. Sam and Bella went home tired but content with an impressive second place in Sam's open and novice ridden events and fourth in best presented. At the Dog Trolls Arena, young Queen can sense that there's work to be done and she's raring to go. She knows that things are building up. Yeah, she's probably shaking a wee bit, a wee bit nervous. She was leaning into my leg quite hard a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, she's focused. Being a younger dog, I want to do it, I want to do it, you know, and that's just like the kid wants to eat the ice cream before they've bought it. How do you reckon Queen's going to go? You mean you've got a man, a dog, and three sheep. Yeah. Um, every man's different, every dog's different, every sheep's different. The country pastoral industries wouldn't work if we didn't have dogs that work stock. When it comes to working clean, the work that you do on farm, that's one thing, but the other aspect is just having a good mate next year. When it's raining and it's pouring and you're out yeah. there just by yourself in the yeah. middle of nowhere, yeah. hey, how good's that companionship? Yeah, that's amazing. You're, you, I mean, you, well, you build a bond with all dogs, but you, your good dogs are really special. I mean, yeah. they, they're your mates. They watch you every move you make. All they want to do is be with you. Yeah. And 
to do the work and to please you. Well, congratulations, Dan. Queen done done well out there from the spectators' point of view. Anyway, you had to go. Yeah, good. Oh, good time, girl. I mean, I was, I was pleased with her. Novice, you know what I mean? She's only had three starts. We got around the course, took a bit of a long route. But, um, you know, it's all part of the fun. I, I'm warm now. My heart's been beating, so yeah. it's hers. So, yeah, no, she's did well. Oh, what could make? Well, look forward to coming back and seeing you next year. Well, we'll look forward. Um, when she's four or five, we'll tell you how good she is. Looks like Tangaroa has made a friend for life there. But it's time to catch up with our mate Merv, otherwise known as Shoot the Breeze. We had Amberley AMP last weekend and he was he had some show jumping and some hunt around the rings. Uh, he was appallingly behaved, <laughs> decided that Clyde Styles were the devil and they were going to get him. Um, but he actually won his, his height hunter and ended up becoming reserve champion hunter, but his manners let him down somewhat in the champion class. What's the plan for today? Go out there and have fun, stay on board, um, just Try and give him a nice forward ride and dare him on down there a little bit and he tends to operate really well when I go, let's go. So I'm hoping I don't let him down. <laughs> he owes me absolutely nothing. He's my one in a million horse. Um, he's had a fantastic career. So now it's just finding, he's too feisty to retire and he's too sound to retire as well. <laughs> He'd be an awful paddock mate. So it's just finding things that he enjoys doing and wants to do now. And um, I'll just listen to him if he doesn't want to do hello. If he doesn't want to do anything anymore, we'll just retire him then, but he's still enjoying this stuff, so, but, well, yeah. Good luck, Merv. <laughs> Thank you. You right, Grumpy? The bar's set pretty high today, and this is only Merv's third show. Woohoo! Let's go, Merv! Well, Merv did Kirsty proud with that round, a commendable fourth. But Merv never likes to line up if he's not first. <laughs> so a nice big drink and a cool shower after some hot work in the arena. So, Kirsty, you got fourth. How are you feeling? I'm really, really pleased with him. <laughs> he was a really good boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't ride him as, as forward and flowing as he needed to be ridden, but he took over and did what he needed to do anyway. So. Yes, so you were happy with his behaviour there at the ceremony and stuff? Um, that's probably the best he's behaved for a while in a prize given. Right, yes. right, so <laughs> things okay. are improving. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm really pleased with how he went and, um, and his, his attitude to a, a new thing for him. So, yes. yeah, it's really good. And, and so lovely to see like a whole new lease on life. You know, at this, yeah. this point. Yeah. You've got to find something that's fun for him now. He's yeah. done, he owes me nothing. He's done everything mm. for years and now it's just finding what he likes to do. Yes, yeah. You're way too feisty to retire, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're and too, and too yeah. beautiful. When we return, Pete's in for his chop. Men and women versus machines. The Hazlitt City Farmyard, always a favourite. And five ducks who have the crowd in stitches. You know, there's something for everyone at the New Zealand Agricultural Show. But I'm heading over to the wood chopping arena. So I'm no good at axe splitting. Fortunately, we've got a rake here. This is one of the oldest sports in New Zealand, going back to 1800s. And look, it's, it's built into our DNA. These guys have got some true grit. Old mate Pete was in getting spinal surgery not too long ago. Let's go check him out, eh? No, it's going really well. So a couple of blazings yesterday and um, hopefully get some more over on old mate today. Yeah, well, I was going to say, with you having a sore back, you might have a chance now, eh? I had a chance about 20 years ago. <laughs> 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, the there. So Peter McEwen, he's on. Following in his dad's footsteps, Peter's also helping organise the wood chopping events. Congrats, mate. Okay, Done well. Ah, uh, went well, eh? Yeah, it's all good. Wood. Buff now. <laughs> <laughs> After that win in the heat, Pete went on to compete in both the standing and underhand semi finals and finished in the top eight. Selected for the team's event, he gave a big lead for Canterbury's upset win over Southland Otago. 
Well done, Pete and Canterbury. The most peculiar of our egg show heroes is the general, with his backward feathers. So I was keen to find Pam. Now, the big question, do they manage to retain their feathers for the big event? Yes, yes, surprisingly, they've done quite well. Um, and yeah. you've got some winners though, right? So yeah. you've got to be thrilled with that. Yes, yes, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Particularly with the tough competition that we do have here. And the general, a reverse frizzle, has plenty to crow about. Not only has he managed to score a first, there's also a rather glamorous frizzle femme fatale nearby. Is he very popular no. with the ladies? Oh, he's got he's got probably about five that are with him at the moment. Oh, so. it's a, a harem. <laughs> <laughs> but what makes a bird popular with the show judges? So, as a judge, what are you looking for in this chicken? So we just go through and we look at overall feather, good feather, mm -hmm. check for lice and there's no lice on it, the bird. Mm -hmm. We open the wings. So you're looking sure. for like a lovely spread? Yeah, and the, and the not split wing, and he's all right there. And then we check the eye colour, we should be nice and black. Got a good comb, he's got, generally have five serrations in the head. So what this is a perfect uh, bird? Yeah, yeah. The general is looking forward to getting home to his girls, but he's acquitted himself with full honours. Going the right way. Yep. <laughs> oh, I said blow in the manifold out here and we've junked it up. It's bad news for the historic there, chaff cutter as the tractor that drives it gets a bad right. case of stage fright. Even attempts at the good old fashioned jump start fail. But the vintage machinery club's luck starts to change. First with approving judges. So the blades in this are very good. Where the oats come out, and here, there's a face plate, very good order. Wooden riddles. They're very, oh, they're very good order. And then some cooperation at last from that tractor. So behind me here is some of Aotearoa's oldest agricultural machinery. Vintage on the outside and vintage on the inside. This is machinery for eight. Cheers, And proudly displaying its first ribbon, the chaff cutter, making those two years of hard mahi and loving restoration worthwhile. But a sedate parade turns into mayhem when a V8 tractor goes rogue. On the cattle lawn at the junior handlers judging, living proof that heroes come in all shapes and sizes. So what's your name? Hayden. Hayden. And what are you? Who have you got today? Buddy. Buddy. <laughs> cool. How old's Buddy? Six. Really? Oh, just a newborn. He's just born. Just born. Just born. And what sort of calf is this? He's a sheriff. Working. And how do you know he's a hero? Because he's brown and white. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm from Southland. I'm 13 years old. And this is uh, he's a 15 month year old bull. Well, he said hi for himself. <laughs> <laughs> With your competition today, yes. what are you working on? What's the focus? Uh, just, yeah, you just got to present him as well as possible. Yeah. And what does that mean for you, precisely? Oh, hold his head up, watch your judge, stand him up correctly, show him off to his best potential. And how heavy is Garth? 715Ks. Is that right? And how heavy are you? 45. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still the boss, eh? <laughs> yeah. I thought for a start that he had chosen an animal which was much too big for him, but once they both settled down, 
uh, he's certainly come to the top. Uh, he knows his job. And across the showground. Another example of taking on something supersized, the South Island's strongest woman and strongest man competition. She's getting her all up. Farmyard is always one of the most popular attractions here at the New Zealand Agricultural Show and for many city kids this is one of their first and only opportunities to really get up close and personal with animals from on farm. Probably the th thing that sticks in my mind is more disabled kids coming in but also the wee kids from town that are they're petrified when they walk in the pen and then by the time they walk out they're really confident and that's the thing that you like seeing here. The aim of Hazlitt's farmyard is to inspire the next generation of farmers. It relies on donated animals and people hand-rearing them especially. So I wasn't surprised to run into Annie. This is Alf. Do you want to come give Nibbles a pet? This is Nibbles. Is it nice seeing the wee kids play with, play with your pets? Yeah, it's pretty cool because a lot of... A lot of kids don't get to, like, experience farm animals and stuff. And now, the day that Annie has been working towards, the Girls and Boys Agricultural Championship. For the Boys and Girls Agricultural Days, it's not just about the animal or just about the person, it's about the unit. So it's the care and attention and the ability of that child to relate to the animal. Obviously, the child needs to have had a, a large influence in the bringing up of that animal. So what you're looking for is the little bit of knowledge and we all have to appreciate that that child is still at primary school. So most of us, when we're at primary school, we're more interested in the lollies and the ice creams. So it's great to see children now that want to take on caring and bringing up an animal as part of their life. You don't need to have the biggest and the best animal. It's more about the kids' love of that animal and the respect for it and their knowledge about it. Nibbles and Annie today um, scored very highly for me and, uh, uh, well, I put them in the top bracket. I'll win the championship for the goats for 2022. All right, come on over to the gumboot throwing, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a couple of celebrities. We've got Ali Pugh from Television New Zealand and Tangaroa Walker from Farm for Life and uh, they're going to try and have a throw-off against the New Zealand women's gumboot throwing champion, Kristen Churchwood from Tai Happy. I've won the New Zealand women's champion and I hold the New Zealand record as well for throwing. All right. Well, I yeah. think we're in safe hands then. <laughs> Techniques, more of the discus throw kind of oh, style. Oh, really? Like yeah. side, sideways? Yeah. And you want the boot line toe first, round like that. Holy moly. <laughs> My money's actually on her. I don't think Tangaroa will get that gumboot out half the distance Kristen will. New Zealand record's around 57, 60 odd metres for men. No pressure, Tanga. Oh, that's Whoa. not bad, not bad at all. Actually, if you hadn't caught a bit of wind, it might have gone a little bit further, but that's awesome. Give me a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Not easy, I tell you. Ellie Pugh now, she's got a better arm on her than Tanga. I reckon she'll get it out a bit further. <laughs> That's not bad. That's actually really good for a first attempt. Yeah. Give her a hand, ladies nice. and gentlemen. Woo! Kristen Churchwood, she is the reigning New Zealand champion. Okay. Oh, she's going to beat Tunga, I'm sure of it. Ooh, there's the pressure. Yep, Kristen beat me fair and square with a throw of 35 metres to my 28. But I've got another year to try to perfect my technique. Hey Tangaroa, I don't think this is big in Southland, but you have to see this, it's a real crowd pleaser. Have you seen these dogs? 
You're the sheep dog over there. No, the duck dogs duck herding. <laughs> Give a hand, this is first appearance. heroes today but there's one more hero that I want Ellie to meet. Oh, I'm intrigued. Let, let me introduce <laughs> you to my little friend over here. What are you doing? So Ellie, we've got it all up this pig. I'm happy to sit on the sidelines for this one. I'm wearing linen today. Mate, no excuses. <laughs> okay. So what we've got to do here Ellie, we've got to oil this pig up and we've got to get him, get him ready for show day. So why would we be oiling him? Because it makes him look masculine. You know, he's like a he's a show pony. We want to we want to try and make yeah. his muscles pop. I see. I so see. I'll, I'll squirt it and you rub it <laughs> with my hands. <laughs> yeah, Do I get gloves? Get in there, mate. Get in there. Well, we'll get down to his Julius. There you go. <laughs> oh, so this is just to bring out the shine. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. I'll get into that For shoulder. Eh? Get into that shoulder. Oh, look, he's loving it. Oh, he, he actually he is. is. <laughs> Good on you, Norman. I'm not too sure about your technique there, Ellie. Fortunately, mate, we've got another 12 months before we get into it. Well, we do, but luckily it has been a phenomenal year here at the showgrounds. How amazing to have crowds back on site. We will see more of you here next year for another round in 2023. Kakite. See you then. <laughs>